you know what time it is. Let's do this. This book has been ranted and raved about so fucking much that I just am excited to see what it's about. Because right off the bat with the red in there, it reminds me of Little Red Riding Hood. I don't want that. I don't know if this was supposed to sound endearing, but this is the most fucked up thing. So there's like this maiden card that will make you really pretty or something. And the main character is looking at the person who's thinking about using it. Because <laughs> you are perfect, Ion, just as you are. The gap in your teeth, your voice too loud in the mornings, the lines next to your eyes when you smile. The maiden will steal those things from you. <laughs> if somebody said any of that shit to me, I'd be like, where's this fucking card? I will say though, this book is giving the perfect amount of information. Like I have no idea what's going on, but I'm also not confused if that makes sense. And these riddles that are happening in between the chapters, like those are fun. However, I'm not loving the protagonist. So far she has proven just to be somebody who has run away from any mildly discomforting situation. Like her dad's house, the dinner, her cousin, she just runs away at the smallest thing to go cry. Dude, this shit has me giddy though. Like I don't even care if anybody ends up together. I wanna know more about this magic. Like who has it and why do they have it and what can they do with it? This is not a good sign though, because the more of this that I read, the less I give a shit about this romance. Oh fuck, Raven's infected. We don't know what his power is though. Oh, I hope it's something good. Dude, Elm is my guy though. Like he has resand vibes. Like he's a bit of an ass, but he's also very clearly a good guy. All right, I have something shitty to say and I don't wanna hear anything about it because I didn't write this. Why are the worst characters in this book the women? In some instances, I mean that like they're not good characters and in other instances, they just don't do anything. Elspeth runs away from every problem that ever exists to go cry in a corner. Ione is a pawn of her father and uncle. Jesper is actually cool as shit, but we don't get any time with her whatsoever. So like we don't see her do anything. The main character's sister suck. Her stepmother is the worst. And maybe it changes, but like up until this point of the book, everybody that does anything or is kind of a fun character is a man. Am I, the, am I the only one that thinks that? <laughs> <laughs> so they're having the sex right now, which, you know, beautiful, lovely, active nature and all that. But I just can't help but think like, what if the nightmare came forward in the middle of it and was like, ah, probably sucks having an ancient creature in your head, you know? Man, this book is so fun though. Like I love these little poems. They give you just the right amount of information, but they also rhyme. And <laughs> when they end, I'll keep reading this, wanting to match the cadence of that rhyme and it doesn't do it. And I have to reset every single chapter. What I could use less of is the term trees. I know that our human expletives like God, Jesus, hell, we made those up. I got that. But trees as a swear word, like fucking come on. God, this main couple is just so fucking boring. I don't care about them at all. I hope they split up. But then there's Elm. God, I love Elm. He's got this vibe that is just like, hey, you wanna go break some laws? Like platonically, you know, I'd like to go break some laws with him. God, I look insane right now. Listen, they're in this fucking inquest right now, right? Where they're trying to figure out who knew what about the infected people. And Elspeth's dad just found out that the uncle betrayed his daughter. And I hope the dad stabs him in the fucking face. No, oh, I mean, he, okay, he does try to do that. It just doesn't go to plan, I guess. Oh my God, the fucking cliffhanger on this thing. I also don't know what to think of the nightmare because he, it gives you a riddle about where the card is hidden and then it tells you he was the one that put it there. How complicit is this guy in every crime that has ever been committed? I better find out in the next one. Already off to a hot start because we're changing POVs in this one, which that's fun. If we get Elm chapters, dude, let's fucking go. If Elm ends up with Ion, I'm gonna scream. Fuck. <sighs> They're gonna end up together, aren't they? Okay, all right, maybe, maybe I do want them together. Dude, that fucking scene where he has to cut the dress off of her, that was something, something fun. All right, all right, I'm coming around. I'll play ball, I'm, I'm into it a little bit. Maybe more than a little bit. We better get more Jesper in this because right now she's kind of just like a pawn to the story. And I mentioned this a lot in the first one, which is like the women in this aren't very like active members of the story. And Jesper just seems like she would be the best at that. Talented, in the King's Court, has cards, and funny. Every time there's an Elm chapter, my mind goes to the Bill Nye, the Science Guy theme song. Elm, 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 Elm. He's just the best fucking part of these books. I would go to the ends of this world to see Elm be happy. Him talking about wanting to save Eon, he just has such a shitty family and he just wants to do good so that he's not compared to them. Ah, <sighs> fuck. God damn, this book is good attention. It's chill for like two minutes after Raven and, uh, what's her name? It's not Elspeth anymore. 
the dude inside of her go off to look for the last card. And then Ion and Elm are just hanging out in the castle and the king comes by and it's like, by the way, you're getting married in a week. Like, shit, dude, you couldn't let him just be chill for a minute? And also, like, goddamn, the amount of secrets the Shepherd King has is impressive. But I am keenly aware that those secrets were made up by a human being, one particularly named Rachel Gillig. And Rachel, I don't know you personally, but if you've teased all these secrets for a very long period of time and then they find out to not be real secrets, but just kind of like some fluff made up, I'm going to hunt you for sport. This chapter where Elm and Ion are playing this game with the chalice is the best thing I have ever read. Dude, fuck Raven and Elspeth. Nobody cares about them. This is the couple we need to be rooting for. Okay, we are at the point of the book where I can't tell if Taxus, the Shepherd King, is a good guy or a bad guy, and that's worrying me. Like, he does a bunch of shit that you're like, I, th I actually think you're kind of a bad guy. But then he's been pissed off all day long because he can't find Elspeth in his head. And the only reason you'd be upset about that is if you care about the person you lost. I think he's a good guy that just wants to commit a little murder. Just a little murder. Revenge murder. Fuck. Rowan was the captain of his guard. Uh, he just fucking betrayed him. You know, the shitty thing here is that the Shepherd King is still alive, but Brutus Rowan isn't. So whatever bad thing happens doesn't happen to Brutus. It happens to his ancestors. Not his ancestors, his descendants. Words mean things. Who, yeah, like the king is a shithead, but he's not the one that betrayed him. I want Brutus to fucking die violently. But it was 500 years ago, and I don't know how he died. God damn, this story's good, though. I fucking love it. Oh, shit. Elm's brother is awake, and he knows some things. Well, we got the first set of tears. Elm's worried as fuck, right? Like, he doesn't want to go into his brother's room because he hasn't been there since he was abused as a kid. And he's just thinking about how he wishes that Raven would come back. Because Raven was always his protector, right? And then his eyes go, like, shaky and unfocused. And the next thing that he notices is Ion has stepped into the room to help comfort him. And it's like, son of a bitch, we were doing so good. I was being a strong soldier, and that got me. Also, you know, I'm worried as fuck what Elm's gonna do about this whole marriage situation. Because he just went to Hawthorne House and got a bunch of dresses and is gonna ask Ion to come to the next dance with him. Feast or whatever. And he told his dad that he would pick a wife after that, which means he's gonna ask her. But if that was his plan, shouldn't he mention it? To her? I swear to God, if he just announces this out of nowhere and catches her by surprise, I'm gonna hate it. Because Elm is, El Elm is thoughtful. He's not gonna force her into that. Is he? Here's the thing about what I've been saying about the women in these books. Jesper just gave up her charm in the woods to help lead them to the Twin Adlers card, right? And I don't give a shit. Like, I'm actually kind of fine if she dies. And that's not because she's a bad character. She's a wonderful character. We just haven't had any time with her. And it sucks because this feels like a moment that you should care about. And I don't feel anything. Holy fuck, Hoth tried to kill Ion. He just shoved her out of a window. That was how she learned what the Maiden card really does. Oh, I fucking love this book. Hoth is a colossal fucking shithead, stabs Ion in front of Elm, and the king is the, 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 the second worst person alive. I mean, Elm first has to watch Ion die being shoved through a window from inside of Ion's head. Then he's got to see it in person because his brother stabs her. I can't remember the last time I wanted a character to die this badly. I just finished the scene where Raven has to say what his third name is. The twists in this book are really odd because they're foreshadowed in a way where y you actually do see them coming. Like it gives you a little bit too much information. However, when it happens, you're still sitting there like I am now where I'm going, what the fuck? Spoiler, obviously, this video is riddled with him. So I don't know why you're watching if you haven't read it. He's related to the Shepherd King. He hates that man with everything in him. He's his descendant. I just love this story so fucking much. Elm is about to kill Hoth, and there's something really special about him doing it with the Shepherd King's sword. Because Elm is a part of the tainted bloodline. So much so that at one point during this series, I thought that he was going to be a bastard child. Because I was like, yeah, there's no way he actually shares the Rowan bloodline. But he does. And he's the one that's going to fix it. And I like that a lot. All right, so they united the deck with Hoth's blood, and he um, kind of just walked out into the forest. Do we trust that? What if he's not, like, dead dead? He's just gone? Like, the nightmare's really just gone? Seriously? I call him the nightmare. He's not the nightmare. He was, he was pretty cool, you know? I liked my time with him. They didn't even say goodbye. Oh, I'm not done yet. What if he says goodbye to Elspeth? All right, shut up, go away. Uh, yeah, they, they said goodbye. This fucking sucks. Done. 
I loved this and I loved the ending. I loved how the love story and the marriage that happened at the end wasn't the two main characters. It was the two side characters. Because let's face it, their relationship was just better. It was just balanced. 